Hey Harmonizers, we just wrapped up Max's first ride with the bit and I get asked all the time, why do I start my horses bitless or I want you to put that horse in the bit or why don't you use bits? So I'm going to answer a lot of that in this video and you're going to see some pretty enlightening footage to show you, kind of proves the point that bits don't give you more control, they give you the illusion control. And if we're going to use a bit for a horse, it needs to be because we're trying to get more subtle with our communication because the horse has a very sensitive mouth and so when you put a bit in there it's more sensitive so we're looking for really subtle signs of communication or we're desensitizing our horse to the bit because we're preparing for a competition that requires a bit or it's because the horse genuinely likes putting stuff in their their mouth and they want to have a bit and that's what they choose if you're using a bit for control then you are very misinformed because I don't know about you, but I've seen tons of horses run off with people and misbehave that have bits in their horse's mouths. And that doesn't mean that bits cause that, but it means that the bit only gives you the illusion for control because a horse can definitely still run off with you if you have a bit in your horse's mouth. So we see it happen all the time. We hear of stories of people getting you know, really hurt on horses that have bits in their horse's mouths. So that's all, um, still very possible if you have a bit in your horse's mouth. So anyways, let me show you how I help Mac learn to accept the bit. In his case, I'm introducing the bit because if I am going to compete him one day or if whoever's riding him in the future wants to compete him, having the knowledge of learning how to accept the bit is a good skill for him to have. And so that's why we're teaching him today. But otherwise, I ride a lot of my horses bitless because there's no real point for me to add a bit. I can do everything bitless that I can with a bit. And unless my horse is a type that really wants to have something in their mouth, then I'm happy to just stay bitless with them. Here's a little clip of Mac doing some lunging. So at this point, he's just wearing the bit over top of the halter the lunge rope is still attached under the chin so i'm not actually pulling on the bit at all and just gave him the opportunity to wear the bit without having to be asked to do anything with it so i did lunge him already to the right and then this is him lunging to the left just to show you a little glimpse of of that one thing i did with him i also did some just walking around the ring with him and he also wore it for a little bit in the cross ties as well just giving him a chance to wear it and then we did some leading and stopping and backing up so this is where I want to start to have him feel the pressure and you can see he's not a super big fan of it in the beginning and he he's kind of gaping his mouth a little bit and he goes to kind of put his head down low which is not a bad reaction because he ends up using his body a little bit better but the fact that he's just not super accepting of it just yet. And this kind of all goes to show that a bit doesn't necessarily give you more control or, or anything like that. It's all about how you teach the horse to accept that tool and understand that tool. So it's more about communication and understanding than it is about the bit that you have in the horse's mouth. And you're definitely going to see more of that coming up as well as he starts to to test this out a little bit more. So I'm asking with that pressure and he brings his head down uh, really low, which is okay. And just doing a little bit of that back up there, totally releasing the reins and then giving him the little cookie there. So horses can still eat cookies and have positive reinforcement even if they have a bit. It is a skill that they kind of have to learn how to do. And if you have a tight nose band on your horse, then it's not going to work per se. But um, being able to eat that cookie while he's got the bit in the mouth will still help him not lock up his jaw on that bit and not get too tight. So it is a good skill to have. So here I'm asking for a little bit more back up and you can see he kind of does that kind of snaking of his head thing. So all that kind of shows me that he's being a little bit evasive from the bit. So I ask him for a tiny little bit of back up there. I'm barely pulling on the, the reins there. And I'm, what I'm looking for is for him to just be a little bit softer. And so instead of throwing his head down and trying to pull the bit uh, kind of out of my hands, I'm trying to ask him to turn a little bit and just be a little bit softer to that. So you can see he's not a super fan of it. You know, he kind of opens his mouth a little bit. And I, I don't blame him. You know, it feels different. 
And the bit that I'm using on him is a level one miler bit. I'm not a super big fan of snaffles because when you pull back on them, they fold and they actually hit the horse in the roof of the mouth, which I don't think is a great first experience with the bit. So this bit is uh, flat across his tongue, so it's not going to fold or pinch or anything like that or hit him in the roof of his mouth. But you can see he's he's very um, overwhelmed by the bit, the whole tossing his head, bringing his head up like that, not really understanding, not really want to think about what I'm asking him to do. So I'm just trying to get him to do those backup steps, which he's already done quite a few of, but he just kind of gets it in his head that it's too much. And I'm just kind of asking him to turn a little bit there, see if he can soften to the rain on the one side. And we know that Mac is more of a sensitive type horse. He tries really hard to do a good job and definitely was the type of horse that, you know, didn't want to be firmly handled, like could get overwhelmed and shut down pretty easily. And I think if he was in the hands of somebody who just wanted to stick a bit in his mouth and yank him around and put some spurs on and, and kick him around, it probably wouldn't go very well. Mac would probably shut down, get overwhelmed and and just be in a fight or flight mode like he would freeze and that's kind of what he's done now is this bit in his mouth has kind of caused him to freeze and so he's basically just planting his feet and can't kind of process that I'm asking him to back up and so he ends up kind of you know throwing himself backwards a little bit so when he goes backwards I try to give him a little bit of a release and then I'm putting very very soft um pressure I'm trying to put some rhythm you can see I'm moving my body to try to suggest like hey let's keep rhythm let's keep kind of moving back and forth here I'm kind of using that right rein trying not to just pull and hold that rein and cause him to feel trapped and I can see that he's you know really having a hard time so I try to kind of guide him over there and try again and he just kind of throws his head and he's like this is really overwhelming I don't know that I can do it so I'm trying to keep an attitude of, hey, like, it's okay, Mac, like, you can, you can do this. And I put a little bit of pressure there again. And I'm just kind of holding that little bit of pressure, trying to hope that he can his, work his way through it. And so this is really interesting what happens here. Uh, I'm not pulling really hard or anything like that. I'm putting a little bit of pressure. And he ends up just really shutting down that he actually kind of lays down and kind of falls down. So even though I didn't think I was pulling that hard, it was obviously way too much pressure for his little brain to process. So, and he's that type of horse where he just, he, you know, he shuts down. And I wanted to keep that little clip in there for you just to show you that putting a stronger bit or really pulling on the horse or anything like that doesn't give you more control. It didn't, you know, Matt could feel the pressure in his mouth but he wasn't able to process and understand it. And so therefore I wasn't having any more success. And so people who have issues with their horses being too strong in the mouth, pulling on them, running off on them, you have to address the root causes because at the end of the day, just pulling on your horse's mouth isn't going to solve the issue. And sometimes people think, oh, I have a bit in my horse's mouth. I have more control then. But that's not actually the case. In Mac's case, you know, you guys have watched lots of videos of him. You know that he's beautiful under saddle and he's beautiful for me to handle and he's very soft and light and he's just wonderful to, to ask him to do all of these different things. And we don't normally see this head shaking and this being worried and bothered by backing up. So in his case right now, you actually have less control with a bit than you do without a bit because... Uh, he gets overwhelmed with that right now. So I work with him. I keep working with him to help him understand that it's okay. Trying to be soft with him to understand that cue. And so you can see that's a pretty decent backup there. You know, still a little bit gaping, like a little bit opening of his mouth when it comes to the bit. But he's understanding a little bit better. It's a little bit softer and more fluid. And then here's a little look again with me standing on the left side of him this time and standing nice and far back. And he's doing much better with me lifting the reins and not getting so overwhelmed and realizing that it's okay. So it took a little bit of time to do that. And then I thought, okay, let's go for a ride. But I'm not going to just go for a ride with the bit and attach the reins to the bit 
and have no way to get out of his mouth. So you're going to see as I come around that I actually have two sets of reins on. And this is the smartest way to start a horse with a bit for the first time is to have one set of reins attached to the bit and then one set of reins attached to his bitless halter that he's used to riding in the fusion halter. So that way, if he is getting overwhelmed, I can start off just with the reins that are attached to the halter and not actually be in his mouth. So that's what I'm going to start with here is I'm going to actually be holding the reins that are attached to his halter and he's basically just wearing the bit. So I'm giving him a chance to just feel that and get soft with that and, you know, let his mouth get nice and quiet. And so here I'm just asking him to do a little leg yield over to the wall, moving off of my leg a little bit. And now I'm going to just speed up this whole section of footage as we do a lot of walking and I do a little bit of bending, a little bit of pushing him from one leg to the other. We do some trotting around and stuff like that. And then here I'm going to go back to regular speed and show you this is me holding the reins that are not attached to the bit. So I'm coming around and I'm using the reins that are attached to just the fusion halter and we're going to do a little trot figure eight here. And because the reins are attached to the halter, it's smooth, it's perfect, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, you know, he understands and he can do the changes in each direction. He can maintain his trot. Totally good. And we can go around, you know, do an extra circle there. So the steering's pretty smooth and then uh, we can you know, I'm doing a double round here, you know, just showing you that it's really easy for him to do that figure eight. So we come to our little halt. We're going to do a little backup. And this is all with me just holding the reins that are not attached to the bit. And then here I'm going to switch and I'm going to pick up the reins that are attached to the bit. And I'm going to just put down the reins that are attached to the halter. So I'm still going to keep them in case he gets too overwhelmed and I need to get out of his mouth and go back to that halter. But I'm going to pick up the reins with the bit. And as I'm just sitting here giving him a moment to just kind of think and reflect. And even here it kind of shows, you know, having the bit in his mouth, being a more sensitive place in his body. He's a little bit more shut down so he's not as licking and chewing and kind of thinking. He's really just kind of standing there a little bit uh, frozen, not really fully relaxed. And he's not, I wouldn't say he's like paralyzed in fear or anything like that, but he's just standing kind of stiff and, and kind of on guard. So I'm rocking back and forth in my saddle a little bit there to see if I can just cause him to be more present and just get a little bit more in the moment rather than right now he's just kind of got a little bit of a defensive stance on like, you know, what is she going to do with his bit in the my mouth? So he's not as relaxed with it in his mouth. And it's interesting because there's a lot of people out there who only want to ride a horse if it has a bit in its mouth and they don't feel safe if they don't have a bit in their mouth. And for me, I'm the opposite. I would rather not have a bit in the horse's mouth. I feel a lot safer without that bit in the horse's mouth. And maybe that's because I train a lot of horses and start a lot of horses under saddle. And I know that the mouth is a very sensitive place and you don't want to be in that horse's mouth if they're already being overwhelmed and thinking about many other things. You want to leave that horse alone in their mouth and instead, you know, focus on all the other stuff and only add that in later when they're more relaxed. So here is me, you know, doing the figure eight just at the walk and just kind of, you know, introducing that bit to him very slowly and you can kind of see sometimes there, like I picked up the rein to turn the corner and he kind of hesitated and wants to stop. So almost any time I pick up the rein on the bit, because it's such a sensitive place, he wants to kind of just slam on the brakes and say, ah, like I'll, I'll just stop rather than kind of following the feel of that bit. And this doesn't mean that Mac will never be able to ride confidently with a bit. It just means that he is learning how to ride with the bit and in the wrong hands that this could be a pretty bad experience for him. So see how I come through the middle and I'm actually trying to steer him to the left there and he's reluctant 
to kind of turn and follow through that. And so I showed you the figure eight where I'm riding with the reins that are attached to the halter first, just to show you, you know, how easy that was for him to get that figured out. And then now that I'm using the reins that are attached to the bit, it's so much harder for him because he's, he's having to think about that. And because he's a horse that tends to be a little bit more sensitive to pressure, he can get overwhelmed by pressure pretty easily and shut down. You know, this is a, a slow process for him to figure this out. So we start to get a little bit of trot happening and you can see when I turn, you know, he still wants to kind of stop sometimes and to have, like there he tries again because he, he finds it a little bit difficult to understand moving forward as I'm putting press, pressure in such a sensitive area of his body. But I'm being very polite with my hands and he's still trying to stop and uh, is not so sure about this whole thing. So I'm not being mean or anything. I'm not, you know, wailing on him, smacking at him or anything like that to say, hey, like, you know, you know, I'm encouraging him to go forward, but I'm not being aggressive with him. I'm not yaking him around and, and making him, you know, really move his head to, side to side or anything like that. I'm trying to be very respectful of the fact that I'm in a sensitive part of his body and that I need him to trust me and trust my hands that he's going to be okay. And so we end up getting our little trot figure eight happening. You can see we get it going there pretty well. We, we managed to get our turns. And so we get our stop. And then I'm going to apply the reins and do our first little back up here using just the reins attached to the bit. So he started off pretty unsure, but ended up figuring it out pretty nicely there just with some, some calm patience. And then here I'll show you guys, I'm going to take him out for a little canner and I'm holding the reins that are attached to the bit, but I'm ready to use the reins that are just attached to the halter if he gets overwhelmed. So it's a little slow to get into his little canter transition there, but ends up kind of picking it up okay and bringing him here around on his little canter. You can see as I start to make that turn, I'm trying to do a canter circle in the middle of the arena, kind of around all of the different jumps. He wants to slow down when he feels that bit, but I'm asking him to stay going. So I'm, I'm really kind of using my body. And of course his halt is super amazing, which it, it always is bit or no bit. He's very good at stopping. And so then we're going to do a little change of direction here and we'll try doing a, a little canter the other way. And so I'm using the, the reins that are attached to the bit here, asking him to do a little leg yield over to the wall. And you can see he's doing better with that bit. Like there, he was able to understand to move over and didn't try stopping. So for his first time wearing the bit, he's actually doing pretty good. Here, we're gonna make our little circle in the center of the arena. Don't mind the horse skeleton that's set up for uh, Halloween in the center of our arena. And then we're going to try to make a turn and then you can see he, he just kind of misunderstands and thinks stop, which is pretty typical of this ride, having that bit in his mouth. So we're going to try again and just kind of work on getting this circle happening here a little bit and working on that, on that turn. As you can see, he wants to really slow down when I pick up that ring. And we really have to be sympathetic to that with the horses that he feels the pressure and I would I'm okay with him thinking you know what that's a fair bit of pressure I'm going to stop and think you know does she want me to stop you know I'd rather that than remember at the beginning of the video when he was when I was doing the groundwork with him and he was feeling the pressure on the bit and his first reaction was to kind of like nose dive down to the ground and try to pull the bit out of my hand so he's doing significantly better than when he was first experiencing that and uh, Mac is pretty lazy and I'm having to use my leg a whole lot so, and it's warming up so I'm stripping off the layers there before we head out and try this other canter circle here. So I wanted to kind of show him the trot circle and get him uh, warmed up to that with a bit before we tried it at the canter. So we're picking up our canter again here. We're coming in with a nice strong canter for Mac and gonna ask him to make the turn 
still asking him to move forward and we get our canner circle he manages to keep going the entire time of course it's lazy max so i'm having to kind of use my legs there and then we get our little halt there so that was pretty good it he got it on his second canner try doing the circle there understanding to make that turn so that's really really good for him and i think for his first time wearing a bit that that's a really nice um start to that you know we did some walk trot canter and overall ended up being a lot more relaxed i'd love to hear what you guys think in the comments of how he did or if you've seen any other strategies to get a horse used to the bit as well but otherwise i am proud of mr mac and i hope you guys are too all right thanks for watching and bye for now